Getting credited for your work in audio has to be one of the most frustrating and aggravating things that any audio professional has to deal with. It is mind blowing to me and pretty much anybody else that I've ever met from mixing, mastering, producers, etc. Every single one of us gets their credits totally screwed up and it's like no one cares. Now compare that to like a film, right? If you look at the end of a movie, even the person who looks at the boom and gets the coffee gets credited, which is amazing and how it should be. Just to prove my point, I'm going to come over here to a video here. I just grabbed any old pop song, so I got this Dua Lipa song. And if we look in the description of the YouTube channel, what do we see? We see no mention of the people that, one, made the video. And usually they're pretty good about at least crediting the people that did the video. But two, no mention of the people who made this song. The writers, the producers, you know, the mixers, the man, you know, like... Nothing. Where is it? We have about the artist. We have a link. Great. But what about the people that put in all of the time to do the work? This is a problem in this industry, isn't it? So if you're like me, then you've gone through the experience and the frustration of wondering why your credits are totally messed up. So I went on an absolute rampage of, you know, trying to figure this out. And I made a video of it here for you today so I can show you how to fix your credits and get credit for your work. So let's dive in and start talking about this. When I started on this process a few weeks ago, I was just like absolutely appalled. I opened up Muso.ai, which I think is the best crediting platform. And we're going to talk about this a little bit later on the entire internet. Um, I was shocked to find out that I only had 27 mixing credits and, you know, less than hundred mastering credits, which totally is not accurate because I've been doing this for a living for over 20 years and I've worked with so many projects I've lost count. I mean, just to give you an example here. So like here is one of my old master folders from archive. And if I control A, you can see I've got 5,727 5, items in here. Yeah, there's some instrumentals and duplicates and things like that. But like, this is just one thing that I had that I'm like, okay, if I've got all these files on my hard drive, you know, I should be getting credit for this stuff. So here's the problem, right? You go, you do a project. You talk to the artist, you tell them how to credit you. Maybe there's a label involved, maybe there's not. You know, maybe a release gets put out only on vinyl. Maybe it's from 20 years ago and it only got put out by CDs. Uh, you know, maybe the new one is on streaming. You know, how do you track all this stuff down? I mean, it's, it's maddening. So what happens is you go into a label, you submit and sometimes shockingly you find out that you didn't get credited on a pretty big album that you did and you're really frustrated about it and then you try to rectify it with the label and they don't care because it usually just gets kicked off to some intern the label has no skin in the game they don't care they just want to put the song out and make money it doesn't matter if the person who reamped the guitars on the record and spent three days doing it gets credit or not it's mind-blowingly difficult now, even if you go to the artist and try to get things rectified afterwards, like, hey, I saw the video come out and you didn't put me in the YouTube description like I asked you to, you know, they'll rectify it. They'll do it. You know, hey, you forgot to tag me in your Instagram. That's great. But when somebody who's like an A&R person is sitting there in an office, how do they look that up? Or for example, I'm a mixer. So if I'm going to send into a new management team that I'm working with and go in for a mix off or something and they're like, hey, let's hear what you've done. What can I send them? other than a playlist of songs that I've done that are relevant to their interests um, that says, hey, I've been doing this for a while. I've worked on a lot of different stuff, right? So to combat this, the industry has various crediting sites. Now, the problem I have with the crediting sites is most of them are absolutely useless, unfortunately, and I wish I had a better assessment of that. Let's sit down and go look at the different crediting sites, some of their pros and cons, and see what's good, what's bad, and what can be improved. Let's start off with allmusic.com. Now, allmusic.com is the OG in this space. They were like the most reliable database and the one that everybody used for many, many years until very, very recently. The problem I have with allmusic.com, and you know, I hate to throw anybody under the bus, but there have been so many mistakes they've made on my own profile. I can only imagine the mistakes they'll have on other people. So if I type my name into all music and I go in here, it's like, oh, wow, I've got... 20 things that I've done, hardly anything serious that I've done. I got Bless the Fall. I got uh, Dope. I got Vinyl Theater. You know, I got a Inhale, Exhale, Righteous. I got like a couple of good records that I've done, but where's everything else? You know, I mean, and the most recent thing is 2019. I mean, come on. Now, the problem with all music is when you go in and you submit and you try to merge profiles and stuff like that, they just ignore it, which really pisses me off. And it should piss you off too, because it's like, they're just totally negligent about it. They don't do anything to fix it. I mean, I've tried to get things added to all music for years. I've sent so many emails. I'll give you a perfect example of this. So here's a record that I did in like 2012 or 13 for a band called Vinius, all right? And the label was Red Chord. 
And if I scroll down to here and I click on credits, you'll see, cool, they got my assistant for mixing and mastering, um, but they forgot to include me. Now, what really aggravated me, and this is after over 10 submissions I've done on this record for years, is they used to have, my assistant is Joe Woolitz. I'm Joel Wanasek. So they had mixing Joel Woolitz. And I was like, hey, that's cool that you've got the two of us listed for mixing, but neither of us you know, that's not a human, <laughs> you know? So, so they correct it and what do they do? They give it to my assistant. So that's just the kind of sloppy credit stuff that really, really, really makes me mad because had I not gone in and updated this in the way I'm gonna show you to do it later, um, no one would know that I've mixed or done this album or anything like that. And this is a really cool album. And again, we worked really hard on this, so we should get credit for it as long as everybody else. And you can see that everybody is correctly credited on this record, except my name is not on it. Thanks all music, you're the best. <laughs> the next site up here that we've got is Discogs. Now Discogs has also been around for a while, so I put my name into Discogs and let's see what comes up here. I've got my first record I ever made with my first band from 2003, a demo I did in 2004. And you know, they've got some records from way back in the beginning of my career, which is crazy. I don't know how they got those, like stuff on CD. And I'm zooming down here and I've got 63 credits, but they don't have anything after 2015. Okay, I've, you're right. I've done nothing since 2015. <laughs> now, the thing about Discogs is like I tried to create a profile and I had some login problems. Um, I didn't try to update it or anything like that. So some people do use Discogs. Discogs seems to be pretty good at getting older stuff. Uh, I have no idea what the credit fixing problem is. Okay, the next one up is Jaxta. Now, Jaxta is one of these services that seems to be a solution to the problem. I know quite a lot of pros that use Jaxta. And um, I went through some experiences with myself, so let me share them. So as we go through Jaxta, you'll see, and I type in my name, I come up and I'm like, all right, cool, I've got like three pages of stuff. I'm clearly missing a lot of bands here. You know, here's some of the cooler records and artists that I've worked with. Some of this has come up here. This is great, but I am missing pages and pages and pages of credits. What's crazy to me is that like certain songs that you've done are in here, but other ones are not. So it makes me wonder who necessarily submits this and what database they're pulling from. So this is really incomplete. So I went through an entire email chain with Jaxta where I was trying to get my credits fixed. And basically here's what they said. Hey, I totally understand your frustration, but to completely transparent, this type of work usually gets handed off to interns, which isn't great. That leaves the artist in a bit of a bind scrambling. In short, it's whack. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no, they're no longer doing credit submissions for all members of JAXTA. You basically got to sign up for the premium service, which, you know, I'm fine with. Due to a company restructure, we had to go directly to the labels to get any revisions and release. Aha, so here's the problem. Um, that we're official source for the music data. Okay, so this is the problem with this. The label screwed this up the first time. They got my credits wrong, they got your credits wrong, right? They screwed this up the first time. What makes you think if you go back to them and they obviously have incorrect data, right? that they're gonna one, prioritize it, because I can think of a million other things a record label would wanna be focused on other than fixing production credits, like making money and putting, keeping their lights on, right? <laughs> ah! <laughs> so they're not gonna fix it. So Jax is basically telling me, you're pretty much screwed. Go sign up for the big thing. You know, We'll go back to the labels and we'll try to verify it. And I'm thinking this is gonna take years to get my credits totally you know, it, it's just totally unacceptable to me and it should be unacceptable to you. So again, JAXTA is definitely a step in the right direction, but for me personally, ah, I don't necessarily think it's the right fit. So I basically said, okay, cool. I'm going to go find another app that's a little bit easier to work with. And finally, we have muso.ai. This website an app, I should say specifically, is a godsend for this industry. Now, like all of them, it's got its faults and it's not totally accurate. I mean, like I said earlier, I had 27 mixing credits when I started. And as you can see now here, I've got over a thousand credits listed. I've been working on this for three weeks. So I've, I've gone from like 27 credits to here's my current status update as of today, me shooting this video. But I went from, you know, the top 5% of mixing and mastering engineers and all I'm in the top 1% and, you know, it charts all this stuff. It tracks all of, all of it weekly. It takes all of your credits that are going in. It talks about your top collaborators and stuff. You can go in and like view all this stuff and see all the different things that you've worked on for all these different artists. And, you know, you can sort them out by what's hot this week, what's not, what's getting a lot of streams. So I think Muso is really, really great because it tracks this stuff. It does analytics. Now, here's something that's totally whack because I have the other upgraded plan for Muso uh, yeah, on my phone, uh, but it shows me on light when I log in here, which doesn't make any sense, but fine, whatever. So there's obviously a bug there. But like I said, what's cool about Muso 
is you can actually submit your credits that you've worked on and you can do this very quickly and easily. And basically they will update it within 24 to 72 hours. In my experience, usually it's same day, if not the next day. And it's amazing because you can go back and you can get credited for all of the work that you've done in your entire career. My opinion is this, I don't care if it got logged correctly with the band or the label. If it's on my hard drive, and obviously you know what you did, and I did the work and you did the work, I want credit for the work that I've done. NUSA allows you to submit that, which is amazing because they take it seriously. There's one caveat, and that is you have to have a Spotify link. So if you have a record that you did in 2004, like me, that only came out on CD and maybe sold a thousand copies regionally, guess what? No one cares. Doesn't matter. If that record isn't on Spotify, it doesn't exist. So again, is it a perfect system? No. Is it way better than everybody else? In my opinion, yes. So I recommend you to go to muso.ai and sign up and start fixing your credit. How do we do this now that we've talked and looked at the different sites? How do we get your credits fixed? Okay, let's talk about that. Okay, so let's start off back by your archives because again, the easiest place to find this stuff, and this is a lot of work up front, but like I said, it's taken me three weeks and I've gotten substantial progress, but go back into your old hard drives of your audio project backups and start logging your stuff because no one's gonna do it for you. So if I log into my current working audio drive, you can see things that I'm working on right now, like Rain City Drive and The Haunt and Girlfriends and Vinyl Theater and you know, Nikki DeMar, a bunch of just, you know, a bunch of cool bands. There's a lot of really great stuff in here. So, you know, if I grab all 437 of these folders, boom, you know, I can go and say, hey, this is something that's out that I've worked on. You know, this is something that I haven't. You know, the same thing, I have a mastering projects folder on my hard drive. So basically I had to sit down, I had to go through my hard drive, I had to find all of the different artists that I've worked on that have come out and I had to put them, you could do it in a spreadsheet or a document. So what you should do is you should go and create a spreadsheet or a document just like this, where you go through, you talk about the album or the artist, the, the, you know, your role and you document everything that you did. So for example, this morning, two songs came out. I had to ban pretty and they tagged me on Instagram and I went, I logged, hey, I mastered this song and then I did an artist gunner um, and I did mix this song and I got links to those and I went in and I did a submission. So I started cataloging all this stuff and I've got like 51 pages of insanity here. You know, it took me a lot of work to do all this stuff, but if you wanna get it right, you just gotta do it yourself. Sit down and make a log of everything that you've done. Next, you're gonna head over to the app and you're gonna log in. And basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna go over here to the credits button. And then you can see like right now I've got a thousand and one credits in there. I've got 740, you know, like it, it tracks all of your stuff, which is amazing. It talks about what your biggest tracks are during the week and all that fun stuff. It logs it, it gives you insights, it gives you analytics and uh, it's pretty awesome. So if you wanna submit your credits, you simply just go up and you enter them in the incorrect credits. And if you wanna see my exact process on how I do this, what I write and how I submit it, cause I've tested a bunch of different things, head over to urm.academy and I've got a mix lab on exactly how to do this, but you know, it's not the most complicated thing. Basically you just go in and uh, you submit your credits right there. So here's the process you can use to get your credits fixed. First off, you have to log everything. Second, you have to create an account at Muso and go sign up and get it fixed, right? And submit it, all right? It's, it takes a few weeks, a couple hours of screwing around. It's a lot of headache. And of course, not everything is gonna get in, but hey, at least it's something, right? So get that done. So after working on my own credits here for about three weeks, you can see that I started off um, on mixing. I had like 27 credits. Here's what I have now. And I have a way more updated that aren't logged yet, but you know, I'm working on it. There's still a ton of stuff that's missing and I'm just starting to work on my mastering stuff. Like I've hardly even entered anything in it. So, you know, you can see that I went from having like nothing to something pretty quickly here in about three weeks. And to me, that's remarkable because now at least, you know, when I go to my profile, I can see that, hey, like I've worked on some of the stuff. I have most of the big records that I've worked on that I care about. And now I just have to go get and track down a lot of the rest of the stuff. So you'll see that, Muso is just so reactive and like very, very, very nice to use in that regards. They take this stuff very seriously. Once you've accomplished that, what you need to do is you just need to keep on it on a weekly basis. If you're a busy pro, you're gonna have stuff coming out every week. So generally I will tell the bands 
when we go to the record label or if they're doing it independently that, you know, I want to be credited a certain way. I want my assistant credited a certain way for the work that he did. So he gets his credits correct. And, you know, it gets registered wherever they register it. And then I come in manually and I add it to Muso. Because like I said, I know from experience that if I don't do it myself, no one else is going to care and no one else is going to get it right. And it's going to be the same for you. So take the time to just do it every week. It takes 10 minutes. A lot of songs come out on Friday for Spotify. So basically, once you've done the work, get it submitted properly to the label or to the artist. Explain to them how you want to be credited, tagged on in social media. And by the way, I'll throw a little caveat in here. In my own producer contracts, I actually have a line where I require artists to tag me on social media because this this is something that makes it very easy for you to track because you might mix or master something and it comes out six months later and you've completely forgotten about it. And how do you know if you get credited? Well, people tag me on Instagram because I require them to. I said, the artist basically, you know, will instruct the artist record company or distributor on a court to credit you in the liner notes or, you know, digitally, blah, 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 blah. Um, they're going to be credited as mixed by Joel Wanasek. And, you know, so basically I've got this in my mixer agreement and I, I make artists do it and I communicate to them how important it is to me to have my stuff credited. So once that's done, what happens is that's your best shot going in on the front, but on the backside, you got to just manually submit it every week. So I just add it to my log when I get tagged on something and I say, oh, cool, this came out. I go and I submit it on Muso. It's usually up in 48 hours or so, and then it gets added and it's fantastic. And what I love about Muso is I can take that, for example, when I'm working with like a new record label and maybe I'm in a genre that I don't work in all the time. They're like, hey, what have you done? Why should we hire you? I can just send them a link. Here's my credits. Look how extensive they are. And they go, oh, cool. You're somebody. Let's work together. Here's a test mix, right? So it's really, really, really valuable, I feel like, as somebody who as a service provider in this industry that you basically have a track sheet of all of the stuff that you've done. It's really, really amazing. So there you have it. Like I said, crediting still is not perfect, but this is how you can at least take some steps to actively manage and fix your credits and get credited for the work that you did, which is so important. I wish more people in audio would take this seriously at the high level. Until then, it's up to us on the producing, mixing, mastering, et cetera side to do our jobs to diligently go in and get your credit. So hopefully this video helps you a lot. Like I said, if you want to see how to act, my actual submission process and all the little technical nerdy details on that, check out urm.academy and I got a mix lab on it on how to get your credits properly submitted. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.